Well, good morning, everyone. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion, your old pal Jaw. Well, apparently we're supposed to get a couple of days of rain, so it hasn't kicked off yet, but I'm gonna take Jaw out for some fun before it starts. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, actually, we may not be able to go to the park. I'm already starting to feel raindrops, and that's all dirt out there, so it's just gonna turn to mud, and he keeps stopping to eat grass, so I think he might have an upset stomach. It's not gonna deter me from doing our vlog, though, today. Um, what I wanna do, actually, there are two things I wanna do today. I wanna take my guitars in and get them set up. Um, one of them I haven't played for so long, I know it probably needs a little bit of tweaking, and I'm gonna go to a place that has really good reviews online, um, but it's in a section of town I rarely go to, but they have really great reviews, and I just thought, you know what, I know I'm gonna overpay anywhere else I go, but all the reviews on here were like, these people are really honest, it didn't cost that much, whatever. So I wanna go check it out, and what we're gonna vlog is right over in that same neighborhood. I was watching a movie last night with, well, I mean, I think most people would consider two of the men in this movie to be the greatest comedians of all time. I mean, literally, um, at least this day and age, if you went up to a group of comedians that are working now and you said, who is the greatest comedian um, in your lifetime, you're probably gonna hear only these two men's name mentioned. So it's kind of a cool movie. It's not a great movie, but it's a funny movie. And since they were both in it, I said, let's go vlog it. And you're probably sitting here thinking, well, what's the movie, dude? It is 1976 Car Wash. Oh yeah. The two comedians I'm talking about, George Carlin and Richard Pryor. Yeah, I didn't really have a plan to vlog it, and then I was watching it last night, and when Daddy Rich's car, uh, that big gold limousine, is riding down the road, I was like, wait a minute, I know exactly where that is and what that is. So it got me to investigating. Next thing you know, we're doing the car wash filming location today. You can tell by all the breezing going through the trees that we're in for it. And I kind of want to get a haircut today too if I can. Yeah, I don't mind vlogging in the rain, but I don't want to drive all the way over to the dog park only for it to unleash as soon as we get there and have to turn around and come back. So, sorry Joster. So I know I've shown this before. When this statue first arrived out here, it wasn't painted pink, and I remember thinking to myself, and I even said it on the video, I'm like, why are they putting this out here? The thing's broken, it's got problems, and I'm noticing now, every time I come by it, they add to it. So it would not surprise me if a few months down the line I came here and this whole area out here is its own like village. <laughs> Some sort of aquatic scene that all started here. Oh, that's new. She didn't have this last time I came by. That statue right there on top. It's pretty cool. Hello, pink flamingos. All right, these are the two I'm gonna take in. This one I'm mainly taking in just because I haven't played it in so long. This volume knob is uh, is loose. This is loose right here. And I think it needs just a new set of strings, a new setup and all that stuff, which I could do probably myself, but I'm a little rusty. I don't really want to go messing with the truss rod. And then this I think is just fine. I'm just gonna have him look at it because since I'm there, why not take them both, you know? Let's go. Ja, I'll be back in a little bit. I am sorry that the weather is not exactly what you would prefer, so you're not gonna get to have the day I was hoping you'd get to have, but I'll be back before you know it. Well, there's the rain I promised. So most of the movie takes place, I think actually all the movie takes place on 6th Street, so we're gonna start over in MacArthur Park. So the view that you're getting right now, you don't actually see in the movie, but this is our establishing shot of Richard Pryor in the movie. Daddy Rich, we see his limo. This is what he would have seen looking out his windows. So I'll get out up here and I'll show you the turnaround shot. So we actually see this shot. We see that gold Lincoln Continental limousine come in this direction and uh, that's containing the talents of Richard Pryor and the Pointer Sisters who are kind of like, basically Richard Pryor in this movie is playing a um, an evangelist, but he plays it kind of like a pimp, so everybody, you know, half the people believe in him and half the people think he's a total shyster. So it's a great part for him. And um, you can see, the way you can kind of match this up is if you look off in the distance, you can see that Westlake Theater sign. You can see that as the car is coming this direction. So this is really the only shot that doesn't take place over on the corner of 6th and Rampart. 
So we're gonna head over there and I'm gonna show you where the car wash was and how you can tell that that's exactly where it was. Everything basically other than the car wash itself is still there. So let's head over there. And yes, you heard me right, the Pointer Sisters. Now, car wash is not like, I wouldn't consider it a Richard Pryor movie, but he gets the most credit for it because he's really the biggest name in the movie. Which is kind of weird to think about because he filmed all of his scenes in the matter of two days, and he wasn't originally who they even wanted to play that part of Daddy Rich. Yeah, can you believe it that Richard Pryor was the backup plan? When we get over to the location, I'll tell you who originally they wanted to play that part. And that big building right there, I've vlogged that before, that is um, in Naked Gun. That is Vincent Ludwig's office. So the actual parking meter where Frank and Ed are sitting there eating those pistachios, throwing the shells out the window is right over there. And if you ever wanna see more detail on that, go look up my Naked Gun vlog. Before we go, I just saw this time capsule over here. It's kinda of cool, 1993 time capsule. But it's got a lot of the history of this area on it. So figured I'd show it to you. Rain's really starting to come down. <laughs> Look at that, how cool is that? Now the movie actually starts with the camera being behind this Asbury sign and kind of panning over and down over to the car wash. So after our opening where the camera pans down from that sign right over to here where the car wash was, we see our first employee getting off the bus right here at this bus stop. So this is basically our best shot right here of kind of matching up that that was the car wash. I'll insert a picture right here that'll kind of show you if you take this shopping plaza that's here right now, take that out. The entire area behind it looks exactly the same. Now let me go over and show you where everything in the movie would have been and how it would have been laid out since it's, you know, so similar yet so different now. So from a side view when you watch this movie, you would have had the, uh, the entire car wash being right here. Then there would have been a gap right here where the cars would have driven in, and then right here is where the dog house was, that hot dog stand. So like I said, now you can tell it's a shopping plaza, but if you can take your mind back to the movie, you can tell exactly how this was laid out. This entire section right here, this front section is where the cars would have came out, out of the car wash, and then the building itself would have been right here which means that kind of where this truck is, that's where the shoe shine station was when uh, Daddy Rich pulls in. He kind of pulls in through this way, Richard Pryor and the Pointer Sisters. And the, uh, the guy that works there says, it would be an honor to shine your shoes. And so they come over to that shoe shine stand and you can see that right here. Now the way that you can tell that this is definitely the spot, and I can't believe that this like, you know, that's, they said that like the most memorable thing to come out of this movie was the song Car Wash itself because it was like such a big disco hit. But you can tell because you can see this building in the background throughout the entire movie. But then you can also see when they're sitting having lunch and pulling pranks on each other and everything, you can see this building is still here with those same exact steps. You can see this building over here is still there. And incidentally, our first, um, our first meeting with George Carlin is actually right here. He's sitting in traffic right here, and that's when he's got the, um, the prostitute in the back, and he's saying, you know, a lot of people say you can't trust people these days, but I trust you. You look like an honest, an honest face, I can tell, and that's when she like slips out of the car and sneaks away. And it's weird because George Carlin's part really doesn't have that much to do with the movie other than the fact that it's George Carlin playing it. But periodically through the movie, He's a cab driver, he'll take off, and you won't see him for the movie, and then he'll come back, park, and usually, um, when he comes back, he usually parks right up here. Parks right there in front where the telephone booth was. Um, he parks up here and he keeps coming back looking for that, that prostitute girl. So they said that George Carlin um, actually improvised all of his own lines, which doesn't really surprise me. But yeah, um, one of the running themes through this movie is that there is a, uh, they're always listening to the radio while they're washing cars. And uh, 
one of the guys, DC, keeps trying to win tickets for a concert that night. Yeah, can you believe it's a 7-Eleven now? And he keeps, every time they announce like, this is your chance to call in, he runs over to this phone booth that would have been right over here and he tries to call. Now what's cool is that he is trying to win tickets because he's trying to woo a girl that lives, well that works over at this diner over here. And that was the spot diner in the movie. That's where Mona works. So you see him on the phone in the payphone booth right here and he's calling her and he's singing Mona Lisa by Nat King Cole and then um, eventually goes in. They all have lunch over there and at the end of the movie DC goes in there all dressed up and he's like I won tickets for the concert tonight and I want you to go and she's like I told you I'm not going out with you again. I want a man with money and basically all the, the normal things you would think to hear and he just looks at her and goes if you think Mr. Wright, Mr. Rich is going to walk in that door you need a reality check, basically something like that. And all of a sudden it dawns on her, yeah, maybe I should go with him. So he starts to walk out that door over there and, uh, and she says, DC, I can be ready in an hour. So all's well that ends well there. And then of course, my favorite scene in the movie, which is uh, when Daddy Rich shows up, he would have pulled in right up here in that, that gold Cadillac and I think he improvised a big chunk of his lines as well. Now, you can see, God, I wish this wasn't here, but yeah, you can see the whole archway of that building in the movie. Literally almost nothing's changed. And this, what's now this Metro PC, PCS station over there, that was Al's drive-in or Al's diner in the movie. They don't actually go there, but you see it a lot in the background. But what you do see that is still there is take a look over here you can see this big six market that was the big six market even then and it's the same exact sign if you go watch the movie you'll match it up now what's interesting is i've seen this movie a handful of times in my life and when i was researching to see if there was any kind of odd stories about it that i didn't know one of them was that danny devito was in this movie and that there are multiple cuts of the movie one with him in the movie and one without him now all the cuts i've seen i had never seen him in there but once i had read that they said if you look closely even in the versions of the movie where he's not in there there's a scene where um he had come to visit marcy and they get into an argument and he's walking away and they kind of left that in the movie where in the background you can see him walking away so when i watched again last night i did notice that in fact danny devito is storming off um, kind of in this direction over here behind me He's storming off over there in the movie. It's not necessarily considered a great movie by most people's standards, but I think it's really funny. And it all takes place in the, the span of one day, all here on this location. I mean, for the most part, I would say 95% of the movie was all filmed right here. So it's kind of cool to be here and see that. And like I said, there were no real stars of the movie. There were people that you knew, like Richard Pryor, George Carlin, the Pointer Sisters, Garrett Morris, people like that. but but none of them were really considered the star. And it was really like a blue collar movie about like these guys' lives, people that worked at the car wash and what they think about go through on a daily basis. So I love that human aspect of life. So it's a really great movie um, for that. And like I said, I, I, I find it to be a fr really funny movie. I love those 70s type movies. And to see how much of the neighborhood is exactly the same. I mean, those archways over there are Let's get around this guy. Those archways right there, you can see those very definitively in the movie. The steps, like I said, the, actually the steps used to be in the movie, they were red. But other than that, that would have been uh, the spot cafe where Mona worked. That would have been, well, what's still the Big Six Market and Al's and then the dog house, hot dog stand right here. And then of course we're standing Literally, we're standing in the car wash getting rained on. So like I mentioned that even though Richard Pryor is probably the highlight of the movie because he's the funniest and the most recognizable and he just has the coolest part, that part was not originally written for him. That was a part that was written and based off of a real man, just like the character they called Reverend Ike. And they actually um, invited and tried to get Reverend Ike to be in the movie, but he declined. So Richard Pryor came in and did it and knocked out those scenes in just two days. Here's a closer look at the Big Six Market sign. So if you watch the movie, you'll see that exact sign in there. So there you go. Pretty much the main and only filming location from Car Wash. 
and they said online that the car wash itself was uh, was demolished in the mid 80s so for about 10 years after the movie came out you would have seen that deluxe car wash sign here and the deluxe car wash sign that you see in the movie was actually the car wash sign of the car wash itself so there you go all right we're out of here we're off to the guitar shop there it is up there on that sign all in one guitar all right apparently i gotta enter through the back okay. pretty cool shop i've never been in here before this is rad shave it down a little mm -hmm. okay so he's found that the uh the eighteenth fret is kind of buzzing out so yeah, it's kind of actually it's not low it's kind of medium high so it has enough gap but when I like bend it here yeah I guess that that buzzing it's okay so that amplifier but then mean a price kind of they have a great selection of guitars in here and I was actually telling them I always uh wanted one of those Brian May guitars and they were telling me that they have set up his guitar here two of them actually this I saw some a video of somebody playing that exact model that thing sounds incredible that is a great Telecaster and it looks great too that's a beauty too now when I was in high school I really wanted one of those that was a uh, I believe it's a 52 thin line if it's not it sure looks like one that was the guitar that uh, Johnny Lang used to play constantly. I mean, I think that was all he played for like the first two or three albums. So I was just sitting here like ogling all these guitars and I was like, what's up with this company Wolf? I, I've never heard of it. And he's like, "We this is Wolf. Like they make these guitars here. So if you're interested, check out the, uh, check out Wolf guitars online. Um, they said there's a YouTuber that had played one of these and now they're getting pretty popular and they told me the price and the price is real reasonable really really reasonable and they look good too check it out all right the guitars are dropped off I'm gonna go investigate their guitars I just want to check them out maybe I'll do a review on one maybe I'll sit in here and play it and do a review for them or something but uh, they said they should have both my guitars done by tomorrow right around this time tomorrow so let's get out of here well, it's not really slowing down any. It's actually getting worse, so we're going to go grab something to eat and go hang out with John, weather this storm, literally. All right, guys, I'm home and I'm drying off, and I just did, like I said I was going to do when we were at the guitar shop, I looked up that guy. His name's Guitar Max, and I watched him playing the Wolf guitar because I was just curious. You know, usually, like, growing up, you hear of, like, five or six main guitar company names and then you hear some like other ones um that you see in guitar magazines and stuff so you know that they're kind of reputable but then you always see randomly out and about these just like really cheap knockoff kind of garbage guitars so being that i had never heard their the name of their guitar that's what kind of started having me ask them because i saw that their wolf guitars are basically um modeled after famous guitars so they have a Les Paul version they have like a Paul Reed Smith version they have a Rickenbacker version which I showed you in here um, they have basses a Stratocaster they basically um, make their own and that was the headquarters that little tiny guitar shop they have those guitars made in South Korea so I watched this guy's video that guitar sounds amazing and their prices are really good I mean for like a Les Paul, generally, a Gibson Les Paul, you're looking at paying anywhere between 1000 to like $4,000, depending on the model that you get. And they were selling theirs for, I believe, $499. So, yeah, and it sounds, looks, the craftsmanship, the build, everything looks really great. So, when I go to pick up my guitars tomorrow, uh, I'm going to talk to them and maybe I'll sit down and play one. Maybe I'll put it on camera. I just want to talk to them. Maybe I can get their story about how they got started because that's kind of cool to find out that there's a really affordable guitar. And they that's that price, uh, $4.99 online, it says that's shipped. So if you get the Paul Reed Smith version um, or their model of it, it's only $319 with a case shipped to your door. That's like unheard of. That's that's why I kind of questioned, you know, the, the craftsmanship and the build, but 
this guy's video, he really kind of covers all that stuff. So I want to check it out for myself. But if you're interested, look him up online. Wolf Guitar. Pretty cool. Okay. I wanted to thank Alicia Coleman and James P. Smith for becoming my newest Patreons. And I'll let you guys get on with your life. Come back and see me tomorrow and we'll see what we're doing with mine. Hopefully getting my guitars. And uh, I have an interesting vlog for tomorrow. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all then. Goodbye.